Would you wear all your favorite hats at the same time? Well, we wouldn't either. That is why we suggest you use only what you need. Switch off all electrical appliances and lights in a newsroom. Remember, use only what you need and save power today. Switch and save. Zesco, powering the nation. Apple Max. Take it to the max. Want to just get out of town with your friends and family? Are you having a corporate getaway and have no adequate transport? Then this here is what you need to listen to. A brand new 35-seater Yutong luxury bus is now up for hire at an affordable and negotiable rate. It comes fully equipped with aircon, TV for your relaxation, music, soothing your trip, and DVD players to give you variety. Book now by calling 0955 0966 or 977 844 141. What makes the new Yo Yo Chipsy so unique? 100% natural ingredients. Nothing artificial. So free, so let's chill. Have a drink with a guy like me. A quality product from Californian Beverages. Thank you so much for your time and welcome to Prime TV's main news. First, the headlines. Zambian drunk diplomat hits and injures police officers in the U.S. ZCTU accuses intercontinental hotel management of abusing workers. Zapid hails ECZ's plans to use Braille ballot papers in Chawama by election. And in foreign news, UN warns South Sudan is on the brink of a food crisis. These and other interesting stories coming up after this. Details. My name is Daniel Tonga. Zambia Congress of Trade Union, ZCTU, has condemned intercontinental hotel management for allegedly gross violation of workers' rights. 
ZCTU Secretary General Cosmas Mukuka says there is need for government to come in immediately and deport the Assistant General Manager of Intercontinental Hotel Michael Neighbor for abusing workers. Mr. Mukuka adds that it is not right for management to threaten workers with dismissals on flimsy grounds. He was speaking at a press briefing in Osaka regarding the dismissal of 130 workers who had gone on strike. Mr. Mkuka has questioned the manager where he is getting the powers to boast that he can fire and hire. He says the union will not rest until the workers are reinstated. The Muse of Labor is the one which instructed him to say these charges are flimsy. So we brought out these issues. Since you have disassociated the Minister of Labor to that, where is he getting the courage to be stubborn? That's, that's why we have, like this, where we have written for this, we have written the Home Affairs. Let me just make mention that the Minister of Home Affairs has a letter where we have called for the protection of this person. Meanwhile, Mr. Mkuka has wondered why government is not responding to the letters the union wrote to lift the wage freeze. He says the new leadership of Edgar Lungu must ensure that they listen to the cause of lifting the wage freeze. Mr. Mkuka charged that the Minister of Labor and the unions must sit down and chart the way forward on the wage freeze issue. He says this week the union is expecting to receive a response from government on its position on the wage freeze. Mr. Mkuka was speaking to journalists in Lusaka. Then we told the public service unions that government is ready to talk now and we gave ourselves a time frame where they should now report to us periodically. We expect the first report this week, <coughs> this Tuesday. Maybe I'll ask the, my deputies to make a follow-up by Friday to see the progress made on this. So we have not received progress this week. We, we have resolved within ourselves to be getting weekly reports on the progress made. So I will be comfortable if maybe every Friday some of you colleagues phone to see progress made was this Friday after we uh, the call up. We, last week, the colleagues who uh, engaged the public service unions to get to the table, and the feedback has to be this Friday. A Zambian drunk diplomat slammed his car into a parked police car in Queens, U.S. on Monday, injuring two officers, police sources have said. Mr. Langford Banda is not going to face criminal charges or even get a traffic ticket because of his diplomatic immunity. Mr. Banda 41 was simply allowed to sober up overnight at the precinct station house before walking away scot-free. Mr. Banda, who works as the second Secretary of Communications for African Nations UN Mission, lost control of his 2006 BM and subsided the parked van. Mr. Banda could hardly hold himself up as he stepped out of his car for a breathalyzer test. The two officers injured in the crash were taken to North Shore University Hospital and uh, treated for minor injuries. According to New York Post, Mr. Banda was so boozed up that he didn't even remember he possessed a get-out-of-jail free card. National Alliance for Citizens' Participation has noted with great sadness the growing numbers of counterfeit products on the market, especially the pharmaceutical sector. Alliance General Secretary Kelvin Chitala says counterfeit products pose a great threat to the health of many Zambians if not controlled. Mr. Chitala adds that the detrimental effects of the counterfeit products can result in damaging a country's global image and investment confidence in the country. He says such acts in the country are making it difficult for the government to attain the health-related Millennium Development Goals because of the substandard fake goods such as drugs. Speaking in, in, speaking in an interview with Prime TV, Mr. Chitala says most traders have been taking advantage of the ignorance of some buyers and end up selling them substandard goods. 
detrimental effects of counterfeiting on Zambian market will, will, will result in damaging the image of the nation at the global stage. And this will pose a serious threat to investor confidence, as there will be no investor who will be willing to invest in a country where counterfeiting is order of the day, because that will threaten their investment. And thus, it will also result in limiting Zambia's potential for new investment and it will pose a challenge to new business development. Counterfeiting in its own is a serious threat to even the Zambian healthy. And this has also resulted in, for the government, having serious challenges in meeting Zambia's related healthy millennium development goals. Aiden Institute has donated 20,000 kwacha to Tianjane Zambia, a production house to produce a TV series. Speaking during a handover of a check, Tianjane Zambia director Albert Muteba says the money will help promote and support local talent in the country. Mr. Muteba says Zambia is a talented country and if more stakeholders support the industry, Zambia can surpass Nigeria and other countries in film production. And Aiden Aiden Institute Managing Director Kelvin Kaunda says the money will help in the creation of jobs in the country among youths. Mr. Kaunda has encouraged local film producers to be creative and produce more films. And Zambia National Arts Council Director Adrian Chipindi has thanked Aiden Institute for the support rendered to the film industry. <laughs> The thing with the film industry is that uh, it attracts young people, so we are very grateful for this, that we are supporting young filmmakers. I know Tianjali Zambia is made up of young people, uh, and uh, these are very hard-working, honest young people. There are people who uh, personally inspire me as a Zambian to say, in our country, the young people are working hard. The NAMA is proud to be associated with this gallery designed to offer financial support to one of our most consistent members, Anastia Njani Zambia. Uh, they proved to be the pride of not only material consumers, but indeed the whole nation as far as the development of the film industry is concerned. And us as an institute, I think if these are some of the things that we, we flourish in. We, as you are aware, we are into human development. As Eden, we want to develop uh, human beings. We are now taking our first break. Stay with us, if you can, for other interesting stories. all your favorite hats at the same time? Well, we wouldn't either. That is why we suggest you use only what you need. Switch off all electrical appliances and lights in a newsroom. Remember, use only what you need and save power today. Switch and save. Zesco, powering the nation. What's your name? Let me talk to you for just a minute. Where you live and what you like to do? Apple Max, baby. You need to give me Apple Max, baby. Okay, I'm just trying to get with someone real because you look so free. So let's chill. Have a drink with a guy like me. Apple Max, baby. You need to give me Apple Max, baby. A quality product from Californian Beverages.
Freaky Fries. Get that awesome crunch. Welcome back and now other interesting news items. United Party for National Development, UPND Chawama Youth Chairman, has announced that the party has not adopted any candidate for the Chawama seat. Mr. Teddy Nawa of Chawama Constituency says there are two names that have been submitted to UPND Secretariat and the party will pick any of the two. He adds that as of now, there is no need for people to start campaigning because uh, before the final adoption is made. He was speaking in an interview with Prime TV in Lusaka. He points out that the party and the constituency have not picked up any person but would do so in due course. He says uh, the youths will rally behind any candidate that the party will pick to stand on the UPND ticket. There is a procedure for adoption, then jumping from the normal procedure of uh, adoption, whereby you only submitted the letter yesterday and start campaigning. We haven't adopted. We are still waiting the further instructions from the NEC. So we are just encouraging to follow the normal procedure so that we can work together. We haven't adopted anyone. We are still waiting. For the instructions two application forms from uh, crowder and uh, him mr munda let the neck do their job and then uh, after choosing whatever they choose we will support that person Meanwhile, UPND Youth Mobilizer Nathan Piri has castigated Zambian Voice Executive Director Chilofia Tayali for attacking UPND leader Hakainde Hichilema. Mr. Piri says it is not right for Mr. Tayali to hide behind his non-governmental organization but rather join politics. He has charged that Mr. Tayali is a PF cadre and it will not do for him to be disguising himself as an independent person. Mr. Piri says it is wrong for Mr. Tayali to pretend that he works for an NGO when he is a full-time PF cadre. He was speaking in an interview with Prime TV in reaction to Mr. Chilufia Tayali that Mr. Hakainde Hichlema and the UPND are violent and have allegedly stolen money from the process of privatization. Yeah, it, uh, it's unfortunate uh, that uh, uh, Chilufia Tayali uh, can speak like that on the media. We, the youths of Lusaka, we feel that uh, the NGOs should actually play a law in the governance of the country rather than siding or rather shown to be uh, supporting one political party. So for us as youths in Lusaka, we are actually asking Mr. Tayari to join PF because he has already portrayed to be a PF cadre the way he was speaking. And over the issue of uh, the way about of the resources which are, uh, UPND uh, is finding so that our campaign can go smoothly, it's none of his business. A person talking about tribe, I think, is so primitive because we feel that this tribal tax uh, comes only when somebody has uh, applied to be, I mean, has applied to be the president of this country or wants to stand as the president. That's when they bring the tribal tag. The uh, Zambia Agency for Persons with Disabilities, Z ZAPID, has commended Electoral Commission of Zambia ECZ to print ballot papers in Braille and allow visually impaired people to vote in Chawama by election. ZAPID Director for Rehabilitation and Research, Mr. Muya Muya, uh, says the initiative will allow people who are visually impaired to cast their vote. And uh, some visually impaired persons spoke to by Prime TV have uh, thanked President Edgar Lungu and the Electoral Commission of Zambia for the initiative. They have stressed that they have not been able to vote for the past 50 years and such an initiative will help them participate in a governance. We welcome the move, the initiative, and the strategy that the Electoral Commission of Zambia has embarked on in the by elections scheduled in April in Chawama. And this is initiative is uh, of printing the ballot papers in Braille. It's a welcome move because it will allow persons with disabilities who are visually impaired to cast their vote 
by the secret of the ballot. So as, as an agency, we are, we, are, we are quite happy by this uh, initiative taken by Electoral Commission of Zambia. Anyway, it's a very good thing. We blind people have got the rights to vote, and we are entitled to that. We, happy. we have to participate. We have the right to, to participate as people are living with disabilities. We are now going for our second break. More in foreign news when we return. Welcome back now in foreign news. Aid workers in South Sudan are finding it hard to operate because roadblocks are suddenly being erected in some areas. The UN's top official for humanitarian assistance has said the UN warned two and a half million people are on the brink of famine and food stocks in some places could run out by next month. The organization also said more than six million people, over half of South Sudan's population, need aid. The situation is is worrying as demands are being made on humanitarian w of humanitarian workers before their convoys are allowed to proceed. Valerie Amos told reporters in the capital Juba on Monday, many aid workers risk being kidnapped and have seen their supplies and equipment looted, she said. And finally, in our news. Niger's uh, parliament has uh, voted to send troops to Nigeria to join the fight against militant Islamic group Boko Haram. The vote took place after Boko Haram attacked a prison and detonated a car bomb on Monday in the town of Difa near Niger's border with Nigeria. MPs said parliament unanimous, unanimously authorized deploying 750 soldiers with a regional force battling a Boko Haram. The Boko Haram has increasingly drawn in Nigeria's neighbors. On Saturday, Nigeria, Cameroon, Chad, Niger, and Benin agreed to establish a 7,800 strong force to fight the group. Boko Haram launched its first attacks in Niger last week and has vowed to create an Islamic state. For these and other interesting stories, we did monitor Al Jazeera. Malaysia's opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim has lost his appeal against a conviction for sodomy. Anwar was sentenced to five years in jail last month, having been accused of sex with a male aide in 2008. The country's top courts upheld the conviction. Anwar and his supporters say the allegations are politically motivated. India's um, Admi Party has stunned the ruling Hindu nationalist BJP with a landslide victory in Delhi state elections. The Prime Minister Narendra Modi congratulated AAP leader and anti-corruption campaigner Arvind Kejriwal. Modi also tweeted to assure Kejriwal of the federal government's support in developing debt. A woman in Hong Kong has been found guilty of abusing her domestic maid from Indonesia. The maid told the court she was tortured and starved. Her employer was found guilty of 18 charges, including assault and failure to pay wages. 
Nigeria says it is determined to defeat Boko Haram and avoid another election postponement. The presidential vote, scheduled for February the 14th, has been pushed back six weeks to give time to improve security. The National Advisor on Security told journalists that all known Boko Haram camps would be driven out by the time of the vote. The UN envoy to Syria is in Damascus for talks with the government. Stefan de Mistura is expected to meet Syria's foreign minister and is looking for a truce in Aleppo. Walid al-Mualem, the foreign minister, says he plans to push for a freeze in fighting there. Continuing fighting in South Sudan, threatening another famine. The UN saying that two and a half million people are on the brink of famine and that food stocks could run out by next month. The Canadian government's calling for the immediate release of the Al Jazeera journalist Mohamed Fahmy. He is a Canadian citizen who's been in jail in Egypt for 409 days, along with producer Baha Mohamed. The junior foreign minister, Lynn Yelich, tweeted, Prime Minister Harper's personally raised the case of Mohamed Fahmy with the highest level of the Egyptian leadership. Canadian officials raised the case of Mohamed Fahmy with Egyptian officials 15 times. We understand this is an upsetting time for the family, and we continue to call for Fahmy's release. we take a look at what made the headlines. Zambian a drunk a diplomat hits and injures police officers in the U.S. ZCTU accuses intercontinental hotel management of abusing workers. Zapid hails ECZ's plan to use braille ballot papers in Chawama by election. And in foreign news, UN warns South Sudan is on the brink of a food crisis. And that's just about what we had on our news. Thank you so much for your time. And remember, a recorded version of this bulletin can be accessed on our website www.ptvzambia.com This has been Daniel Tonga. Thank you so much for your time and bye-bye for now. Hey girl, what's your name? Let me talk to you for just a minute. Where you live and what you like to do? Apple Max, baby. You need to give me Apple Max, baby. Okay, I'm just trying to get with someone real because you look so free. So let's chill. Have a drink with a guy like me. Apple Max, baby. You need to give me Apple Max, baby. A quality product from Californian Beverages. favorite hats at the same time? Well, we wouldn't either. That is why we suggest you use only what you need. Switch off all electrical appliances and lights in our newsrooms. Remember, use only what you need and save power today. Switch and save. Zesco, powering the nation.